Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to Figs Outside. So, um, no, I am not in the tractor selling, renting, or anything business, but I did happen to buy a Coyote tractor um, made by Daedong USA. Daedong is based out of South Korea. Um, they've been around for a really long time. But anyway, we're not going to go into that. If you want to look them up, you can look up the history. So, it is a Coyote DK4710SE um, HST, which is a hydrostatic transmission. Um, pretty cool tractor. Uh, this tractor is 44.9 horsepower. Uh, it has um, a lot of really awesome features, and I will post the specifications right here and the schematics of, or not the schematics, but the details of the tractor, the specifications, um, including lift capacity, uh, engine, this is a diesel, three cylinder engine. Very, very simple. They made it very easy to work on. But uh, anyway, just a couple little things with the tractor. We're going to go over a little bit. Uh, we'll fire it up. This tractor is really quiet. You, you can run it um, and still talk. It's not overly loud. Uh, pretty awesome. I'm just around six foot two, so you can see the front tires come up to just over mid thigh, and the back tires are right at the beginning of my rib cage. Um, so there's that. This tractor doesn't have the cab. You can get it with the cab. I purchased the tractor the way it sits right now um, with the rebates from Coyote and uh, purchased it for just over 31000 It's the ROPS, which is this, which is the uh, rollover protection system. So anyway, let's take a closer look at the tractor. We'll go over some of the features. We'll check out under the hood and uh, we'll just kind of go over some of the basics of it just to kind of give you guys a quick view. Um, and uh, yes, it is an orange tractor just like the or other orange tractor company, but I went with this tractor company because uh, it's got, um, for the size and everything else, pretty similar. Um, this one has a little bit more horsepower. These ones have a little bit more uh, hydraulic oil flow. And I've ran the other orange tractor, and it was kind of jerky, kind of rough um, when you're doing multiple functions with the hydraulic system on the bucket loader. This one is actually pretty smooth, um, and I heard that about them. And I heard the um, it's got a really good warranty. So anyway, we'll uh, go over some of that stuff and we'll take a closer look. All right. All right, guys. So starting off, here we go. So we got a 72 inch, six foot bucket width uh, with a cutting blade on it. You can get it without the cutting blade. Um, the cutting blade helps to save the bottom of the bucket. It does have a tiny little cutting edge right there, but you know you damage that the cutting bucket or you damage the little cutting edge on the cutting on the bucket. Jeez, sorry guys. And um, this is a lot more work when this, you can replace it. You can see all the bolts and nuts right there. So um, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld um, a, a D-ring on the top in the middle and then I am going to weld some chain hooks on the top. Uh, anyway, so as you can see, it's a very good looking tractor from the front view. Um, it has the skid steer quick attachments we'll go over that here in a second you can see the coyote emblem it's got the headlights um, the little brush grill guard so the skid steer quick bucket attachments um, most tractors are using them except for the green company and uh, if you know you know so what this is it's got a, a basically a pipe welded down there it's got a spring pin right here a bucket lever Pretty easy. Pulls that pin up, <clears throat> you tilt it, drop it a little bit, and it pulls it out of here. When so when you drive up to it, you can just hook it in, lift it, and then it hooks on. Very simple. See, lock and unlock. And there's a better look right there. You can see how they're kind of slanted and it bites into that bar down there. Super quick, super easy to change. Um, so right here on the hood. This is the center line. This is the center line of the tractor. They did this on purpose, not just for cosmetic looks. So it's easier to um, stay on track. Also, it's got the bucket level. All your hydraulic lines are routed on the inside of the frame, so it's nice and easy. And one other thing that I really liked about this one compared to the other Orange Company is every single moving part on this tractor basically um, has grease zerk fittings and they're all recessed and they're all guarded by this piece of steel and so they're protected but um 
on some of the other on the other orange company tractor they have there's a few of them but there's not a lot um, but this one has them everywhere which is awesome so more grease more lubricant on the moving parts which equals longer life so with the hydraulic lines um actually let's go to this side right here these are wet disc brakes um which i know sounds kind of funny but they're inside the axle um, and they're cooled by oil which creates a uh, longer lifespan cooler operating temperatures it is power steering um let's see. so let's go to this side of course it's got all the all the danger stuff on it the warnings um and then also it's got the hydraulic line plug so when you pull the lines off you can plug them but they're all color coded so you know exactly where back to go as you can see right in there so you can see the uh yellow, white, red, and green. Um, the bucket and loader assembly is pretty easy to take off. These are the levers right here. I'm not gonna go into all that. Um, since it is hydro steering there, it's, it's like an automatic transmission. So you have your forward, your reverse. This operates the bucket and the loader. There's the fluid level for the axles. Um, Oh, here we go. That's the subframe, and you can see everything underneath there, how everything moves and operates, which really nice is they're all, it's all mechanical. None of this, which I really like on this tractor, is it's all mechanical. It's all mechanical levers. There's no, uh, um, I should say, cables, which can stretch and wear. It's not uh, electrical, so pretty awesome. But this is the subframe assembly. Um, I don't know, let's see what else oh, to go over for. Uh, grab handles you can get in on the side. It's the uh, Three point system. It's a category one So you can also this one. I didn't get it with it. I'll probably order them later um, But it's the hitch system and so with the arms you can get the telescopic arms These ones are the fixed arms the telescopic ones are pretty sweet They cost a little more money um, but that's a whole different story. So with these, which the, these ones are just your standard, the telescopic ones have bolt and they, they can extend backward and forward. So it makes it easier to hook up your implements on the, on the backside. Um, it's got, you can see the ROP system. It's got the pins. You can pull the pins. This will fold. Um, it's got your blinkers, cool little triangle, your farm triangle, slow moving equipment. It's got your prong set up right there. This one, <coughs> does have the remote hydraulic system here's the lever for it right here you can hook it all up and this adjusts the arms up and down so um let's see what else so here's the side the step it's got a i believe it's like 12.7 maybe 12.9 somewhere in there give or take a few points on the gallons of fuel uh the step this so it's got the brake system right here they're hooked together with this piece right here so it's actually one solid piece. That's the parking brake. So uh, big stretch, push on it, pull the lever down and you let up and it locks it in park. This does have a seat kill cutoff switch. So if you're leaving it running, you're not in park, um, you get up off the seat, it'll run for approximately like five to six seconds, I think is what it was. I forgot to really time it, but that's, I'm pretty sure it's right in there. And the tractor will shut off. Um, it's got your seatbelt system. So with this, because um, it is hydrostatic and it's also a three speed. So that means obviously you got neutral. You got your low, medium, and high on it. This right here is your four wheel drive lever. So we'll go down here and we'll take a look at that. This is your PTO engagement, so four-wheel drive. I did use this yesterday at shift on the fly. Um, the seat, so a lot, of, a lot of them you lift up. This one, you pull to the side, and this is a, uh, a spring seat. It's kind of like air ride seat, pretty awesome, super comfortable. Um, so you pull this and adjust the seat backward and forward, and then it's got an illuminated dash. It's got your blinkers, cool little horn. And then <clears throat> it also, uh, there's the, the switches on those. So because of this tractor and the horsepower that it is, this tractor um, 
it has a regen system. So with the regen system, basically the guy told me if you're not like cutting, uh, you're not doing a lot of cutting, you're not doing a lot of plowing, um, just a lot of long, high RPM work, basically every 10, 15 hours, it's gonna tell you it needs a regen. So basically what you do, 10 to 15 hours, um, what he told me to do, he said he hasn't had a problem with it, and he knows a lot of people that are doing it, no issues. 10 to 15 hours, you come up, especially in the wintertime, you know, you're gonna be doing a lot of like snow plowing, um, your driveway and stuff, low RPM type stuff. Uh, not a lot of heat build up, so it's gonna plug up the, the particulate filter. So basically you come up, you fire it up, you let it to get to operating temperature, you just come up and you hit that button. So these are the switches right here. So that is for the regen. This one also has cruise PTO. So it says it's like cruise control. So you, you uh, there it is right there. Um, this also is a tilt, gosh dang, a tilt wheel. That's the lever right there. So you can adjust the steering wheel up and down. Uh, what else did we go through? Um, yeah, uh, standard PTO. This, so I have run this tractor a little bit. Oh, and right here is the, <clears throat> PTO drive, got the little bungee to hold these from clanging back and forth. This screws off. Ooh. And there should be the axle and the splining for your PTO. It's got a nice little cover, keeps, and you wanna, you wanna keep this. Um, I would say just because you screw it back on there, it keeps all the dust, debris, and other gunk in there that can jam up your bearings. Um, Oil check, I'm like, all right, all right. yeah, that's, so that's your oil check. There's, I'm not sure what that one's for. Anyway, we'll come back to that later, maybe. Anyway, that's for your hydraulic hookup lines, for your um, your attachments, so if you're gonna run like a backhoe system, anything like that. So I kind of think we went over everything on that. Oh, oh let's, uh, let's check this out real quick. Um, so, uh, sorry guys. So this is your brush and your grill guard. We'll go over this. So you pop those like that, super easy. And this folds down, boom, that easy. And then you come over to this side and right down here, there is a pull level, pull lever, blah, sorry guys. And so there it is, easy access to the engine. They designed this specifically so you have, you can basically do your own maintenance on it. You have your, filter down here your battery sits right down there and so basically you pop those plates or yeah you pop that off that pulls down and you can undo your battery right there your filter it's got your your uh, coolers your radiator um, here we go here's a good look at the motor right here it does have a metal hood which is really nice some of them have a plasticky hood which sucks so there's that right there. And like I said, they, they designed this pretty well. The only thing I, I wish they would have designed a little bit better, um, especially for like, if you're gonna be moving hay around is super, super dry, is to me, um, a lot of the diesel engine stuff, especially in semi trucks, we call them weed burners. The exhaust comes out the backside of the tractor and it kind of points out the back and toward the ground. This one is in the front, so it's not super close. Um, but with your bucket off there, I mean, it is kind of close if you're moving to really tight quarters. Um, it can get pretty hot. Uh, I wish they kind of routed the exhaust a little bit different, but you know what? It works. Um, I'm just kind of that guy that would be a little worried about setting some hay on fire. So um, everything is right here. It's, it's well protected. Um, so you have your alternator, the belt system, and you can pop these out. Uh, you can remove your exhaust, which allows you to get to the belt system. Like I said, it, it's designed pretty, pretty well. Uh, you have your starter right there. Super easy to get to. Plenty of room. I mean, I have pretty big hands. And so they left quite a bit of room to where you can get in there and finagle a little bit. You, it's better than some cars, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's that. The heat shield. Um, and, oh, you guys are going to like this, especially if you know diesel motors. Look at this cute little turbo. Huh? Yeah, it's really cute. 
Um, but hey, it's a turbo. It works. And it's, I mean, it's a three cylinder engine. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not huge. So anyway, there's that. Um, yeah, let's jump on this thing. We'll fire it up. I'll show a little bit of movement. Um, all right, we'll do that. Here we go. All right. So before we get into another part of the video, I just kind of wanted to go over this part. Um, where is it? So there's my bale spears for bales. Um, I'm waiting on the backhoe attachment, which adds weight to the back. Yes, we're gonna use a lot. A lot of people think they're just kind of uh, overpriced, not very useful. Um, it is what it is. And so uh, with that, the tractor, most of the weight on these, those tractors, or most any tractor is on the front end because of the loader and the bucket system, that's very, very heavy stuff. On the back side of the tractor, um, most of your weight comes from the PTO setup, the axle, the tires but all that front loader system, everything sits well out in front of that tractor. So it adds a lot of weight and a lot of front on, or a lot of weight and a lot of stress on that front axle of the tractor. But I wanted to try it. Um, you can add tire ballast. This one doesn't have tire ballast in it yet. I gotta go to the local tire shop. I'm gonna have some tire ballast put in it. And then also I'm probably gonna get a ballast box um, just for now while I'm waiting because they don't know when the backhoe system will come in, which adds weight to the back. Uh, the ballast box, they're pretty, pretty cheap. They're roughly about 280 all the way up to 600 bucks, depending upon what company and what you want to spend on them and the amount of weight that you want to add. The one that I'm looking at is 279 bucks off of Amazon. Uh, and it holds 800 pounds. So there it is. But here's what we're dealing with. No, not the target. So we're still doing a lot of cleanup with the new, per well, with the most current purchase and the move, we're still doing a lot of cleanup on the property. So these are our hay bales for the winter. We got the alfalfa small bales over there, little 65 pound bales. Um, and then we have the big grass hay bales. These bales are a thousand pounds a piece. They're almost six by six, um, but they are a thousand pounds a piece. So I did use the bale spear just playing around, got into this bale. And it will lift the bale no problem, about a foot, foot and a half off the ground. If you're moving it really low, not a big issue unless you're going to be going like uh, downhill or you're side hill in a little bit. This has got a slight slope on the ground. Um, and so when I did pick it up, it was fine. I backed it up. I drove it forward. Not a big deal. As soon as I lifted it up past the two foot mark, roughly I could feel the back end of the tractor wanting to tip up um, cause you're lifting it. And so it's, it's, it's like a cantilever system. So um, can be kind of spooky, can be kind of dangerous, can be kind of lethal depending upon what you're doing and how you react um, to that. So adding ballast on the back plus tire ballast uh, adds a ton of weight on the back end. Um, and so we, we will be able to lift these bales these are too high um, on and off without an issue, according to a lot of people. We're going to find out. Um, but anyway, let's get back over to the tractor. All right, so here we go. We're sitting in the tractor. Um, nice roomy cockpit. So right down here, we have a cup holder. We have a little slot for your cell phone or your iPod, I guess, whatever. Anyway, there's the low, medium, and high. And over here, you have your PTO controls, seat belt. And so, uh, yeah, here it is. This, is. this is what it looks like. You can see the center line, center of the tractor. Um, let's go ahead and fire it up. So this thing starts really, really well. And so we'll check out the illuminated dash as best as I can for you guys. Um, zoom in, kind of a glare, sorry about that, my bad. Um, there it is. And you can see all the light ups, the battery, um, start, we're in neutral. And so here we go. Oh, and then you can see, uh, I was running around yesterday. I've got 1.6 hours on when I got it. It had, uh, point 0.1. So. Not too bad. I'm talking the same way I was talking. Sorry about that. Talking the same way I was talking. Um, got my foot on the brake. So that's done there and you can see your control levers. Um, right here is your four-wheel drive, easy access, um, seat adjustment, that or this for forward and backward, that's for the, for the bounciness of the seat. Um, yeah, and then you got your, your emergency flashers. 
And the other side. Uh, maybe. Oh, can't do it. Sorry, guys. It's making me sick. I know. There it is. So enough of that. Um, so with your your loader movement, um, it's in it's in reverse order. So up up is down, down is up. So we're gonna go up. So there it is. Let's bump the RPM a little bit. So there it is there. So like I said, down is up, up is down. See it? Put in the bucket. Right is down, left is up. So not too bad. So pretty smooth, pretty smooth actions. Um, it's on the bucket, so doing a multi, putting a load to it. You can see it coming down. We're gonna lift it, tilt the bucket straight. So there's that. Um, very easy controls right here. So since this thing is a hydro hydrostatic transmission, uh, one thing I want to get it get and show to you guys is actually we'll do that right now. So um, we'll see if it'll do it. So we're in neutral right there, and see if the neutral goes off. We're going to put it in low. So okay, so I'm pushing it to low. So I'm having a, it's, it, people are going to be like, oh, well the synchros are meshing because it's hydrostatic. So all you do is you take it and you just barely bump the throttle. See that, guys? So now it's, it's lined up, so it'll go in. But when you do, you just barely bump it. We'll see if it'll, it'll pop. Uh, do that one. Let's see if it'll uh, okay, move it a little bit. Slid right in. Anyway, so there it is. Um, there's the pedals. Forward. Backwards, super simple, super easy to operate. There's another company out there that uses the rocker pedal forward and backward, like on some riding lawnmowers. I think that's kind of janky, but it is what it is. That's what their company is doing. Uh, teach their own. So, anyway, like I said, here's your throttle. Powered up, pretty loud, pretty high. Powering down, nice and smooth. So, Anyway, guys, that's kind of what I, I just wanted to go over it and show you guys. Um, so, it is hydrostatic, so there's no shifting. So, I can go forward, go backward, go forward, and then brakes. And so, what I would recommend is, I don't know, it's one of those things. It's kind of, I like putting my truck in neutral and using an emergency brake. If I'm getting out um, at any given time, I'm leaving my truck running. Some people just put on the emergency brake and leave it in, in drive, or you know, that's that's ridiculous to me. So, popper in neutral, and so we're gonna roll. Yeah, so it's not gonna do it. Actually, let's uh, put the bucket down. So quit rolling. And so here's here's the safety feature, guys. And so this thing has to be in neutral when you want it to start. And so, all right, um, let me uh, ooh, zoom in. All right, so standing up and getting off the tractor. There he goes. You guys heard it. It died. So sitting back down. All right, so shut off. Here we go. We're going to fire it up. There it is. So going to put the parking brake on. And stand up. And you can see I'm standing. I'm not sitting on the seat. So the emergency kill switch or the kill switch isn't going to be activated because it's also in park. I think it's a pretty cool feature. Some people are going to like it. Uh, some people aren't going to like it that the matter of the fact that when you get off the tracker, it kills itself after, if you don't have the parking brake on. It's a safety thing, guys. Um, it's a liability thing because there's a lot of, so to speak, stupid and sue happy people out there. So anyway, actually, what am I doing? All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me and uh, thanks for watching this video. And uh, I, you know, if it helps you out, it helps you out. If it doesn't, um, maybe it'll uh, help you decide to buy one of these tractors um, for the price. They're pretty reasonable. Um, they have a very good warranty. You could check them out. I'll post the link in the description below um, for the company. And um, like I said, I'll post the specifications um, earlier in the video. 
you can take a look at that. And then their the company website is super easy to navigate, super, super easy to navigate. Um, they, they designed it very, very well. Um, but, uh, yeah, doing some of the comparisons and the pricing and, um, the warranty and, uh, just a lot of the other features of this tractor made me decide to go with this one instead of the other orange one or the green company, um, the other green tractor uh, or the green tractor company, I should say, um, great companies, great companies. Um, and they've been around for a very long time, but, uh, for the price and everything, this is what I decided to go with and for what I needed it for. Um, this, this, you know, we, we have a small hobby farm and, uh, we're not going to be, you know, using this tractor day in and day out, grinding with it and just, um, putting, putting in the work, you know, um, but we are going to be using it. We're going to be using it quite a bit. So with that guys, um, yeah, it's just kind of one of those, uh, one of those deals that uh, I hope it helps you decide on. You Maybe you could use a video to compare it to some of the other ones, some of the features. And when you look at a video, it's kind of hard to decide or look at a website to see what size the tractor really is. Um, and so that's why in the beginning of the video, I stood by the front tire, um, oh, standing by the back tire. And so I kind of did all that. Um, and this, this tractor weighs... Um, I can't remember. It's uh, like the mid, it's like 3,700 pounds or something like that, or it's somewhere close to there. Um, and that's just how it sits right now. So anyway, guys, um, I'll take, sorry for taking up an, uh, enough of your time. Anyway, um, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. If you like to see a lot of uh, hunting stuff, um, just different odds and ends, um, you can also check on my Instagram. That'll be posted in the link down below too. A lot of a lot of cool Idaho sunset pictures, a lot of just uh, a lot of lot of hunting uh, pictures, uh, just a whole assortment of random stuff, um, but all cool content, very cool content. And uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys, and I thank you for watching this, and we will get at you guys a little bit later. Have a good day. Bye.